Hey, what's up you guys? So today I'm going to do a get ready with me. <laughs> I have a basket of makeup here. And I'm going to tell you guys a story about this guy who tried pressuring me to send him naked pictures. So, here we go. I'm hoping maybe this story will help you guys. Spoiler alert, I didn't send any to him because <laughs> I'm not that kind of person. And the more time goes on, just in my life, I'm losing all faith in all boys, honestly. Like, alright, so. <laughs> I just woke up, like, 20 minutes ago, so I'm, like, weird. So, today we're going to be using the Miss Bliss palette. I just got, like, 16 palettes from ColourPop. <laughs> They had a sale, so I was like, well, time to get some ColourPop palettes. Okay. I'm not going to use primer because I don't feel like it. <laughs> oh, yeah, my hair is shorter now. I chopped some of it off because I was tired of dealing with it. <laughs> so I'm going to be using my Advanced Real Moisture from Touch and Soul foundation that is in my Project Pan. So... Here we go, here's the story. So, there was this guy that I knew because he had lived on my road like since forever. Like, I basically grew up on the road that I live on now. And so I kind of knew him just because he was like another like person I would see like at the bus stop and stuff for school and whatever. And I think he's about like four years older than me, so. I wasn't really like in classes with him or like friends with him more just like acquaintances I guess I love this sponge it's from makeup eraser it's just like so soft so so I knew this guy and let me just say <laughs> I get asked a lot of things by a lot of guys because I'm on YouTube so a lot of guys will snapchat me like asking about stuff and I'm like uh no and a lot of them are very respectful and will say oh sorry okay like never mind bye like whatever but this one not so much so this guy we were talking a little bit just like not about like anything in particular but anything we talked about he would try to like make it like sexual and I was like, dude, because if you guys, like, know me, like, I am, like, not, like, no, not doing that. But, like, here's, like, some examples. He would just, like, okay, say we're having a conversation, and I write fan fiction, and he would be like, oh, what are you doing? And I would be like, oh, I'm writing fan fiction. He'd be like, what about? And I would be like, I'm writing a Riker Lynch Imagine about night swimming and then he would be like oh have you ever been skinny dipping and i'd be like no and he's like well do you want to and i'd be like no not really like <laughs> you just like do that like all the time with like different subjects like and then here's like another like good example if i was like okay brb i'm gonna go shower he'd be like have you ever showered with anyone before do you want to like dude come on so that was annoying but I would just <laughs> tell like no I'm not interested like whatever move on but this one particular day he snapchatted me and <laughs> I was doing um schoolwork I was doing a discussion board at my dining room table and my parents were on a zoom bible study with my pastor and some other people from church i'm using this random loose powder that i don't know what brand this is <laughs> to set my makeup and he starts snapchatting me telling me that he's drunk and then asking me to send him naked pictures and i'm like dude like no i've told you no before this has happened before, by the way. But this time, he just kept pressuring me and pressuring me and pressuring me. And... 
honestly, it's disgusting. And that's why I'm losing so much faith in the guys, in the world. <laughs> um, so, I think I just stopped responding to him. And I waited for <laughs> um, my parents' Bible study to be over. And then I told my dad, hey, you want to, like, scare the crap out of this boy for me? Because he keeps asking me to send him naked pictures. Oh, and here was, like, the other thing. Here's, like, his... I guess a way to try to convince me to like do it since we were talking over snapchat he would be like snapchats disappear for a reason it's like I don't care they're gonna disappear and I'm not sending that to you like not gonna happen so um, my dad wrote a scary overprotective dad email to him and basically scared the crap out of him and was like, don't you dare, oops, ask my daughter for naked pictures ever again because it's not going to happen. Oh my gosh, I cannot screw this on here. And after that, he sent my dad an apology and then unfollowed me from everything. Like social media. So, should be the end of that. But... The reason I'm telling you guys this story is because I'm genuinely worried for the next girl this guy talks to. So I'm going to use this random bronzer here because I know I have no problem telling guys like no, like that's not going to happen. But I know like some girls might be pressured into this stuff. And I'm worried he's going to pressure a girl into sending something she's uncomfortable with. Because even after me saying no, he kept trying to convince me and still pressure me into doing it. Like, <laughs> so I'm worried for like the next girl he tries to talk to. Because even though I can say no with no problem, I know other people might have a harder time doing that for whatever reason but that's my dealio and here was like the funny thing not really funny but funny to me I guess he had told me he doesn't have like many friends and I guess that's why he would talk to me all the time but you know what maybe it's because you treat people like this maybe it's because you treat girls like this maybe that's why nobody wants to talk to you because you're doing crap like this and it's unacceptable and it's disgusting and nobody wants that so that's my story of that next I'm going to use my blush and my project pan what? meow yeah Right here. Also, it's very windy out. I have a basket outside for my bird feeder and it's like swinging back and forth. So if you hear anything, it's my bird feeder. She's camo cat today. She's wearing a camo outfit. I love this big fluffy brush so much. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this blush can be a little intense sometimes. <laughs> I think it's fun. So, I'll just tell you guys <laughs> about my life right now, since that was such a short, quick story. But, anyways, more of the story. You don't have to send anybody anything, and by all means, say no if you don't want to. So, <laughs> I have been going to a therapist again for my anxiousness. And this is a therapist I went to when I was in high school. So I knew I liked her. I'm going to use this random eyeshadow right here as my highlighter. <laughs> Here's the thing about therapists for me. I don't do well under therapists that have a like step-by-step -step approach. I can't follow that. That doesn't work for me. I need a therapist to like tailor their therapy to me. Um, 
because I've talked about this before, my anxiety is from an imbalance of chemicals. It's not because of like past trauma or like anything really in particular. I'm just anxious 24 seven all the time. So they have these like step-by-step -step things that I guess they go through to try to figure out like your trauma or whatever, but I'm like, I don't have any. So just like help me cope with it. Here's the funny thing though. I'm using The Brow Gal by Tanya Crooks from my eyebrow pencil. Here's the funny thing. I was on, whoa, hello, a waiting list for this therapist because she just had like too many clients. So I've been waiting for this particular therapist since like September-ish. And now I'm like finally in with her, so it's great. We meet over like some video chat platform thing. I can have Angel, it's great. <laughs> we haven't really done much of anything yet, just because the first few times is kind of more like getting to know you. I mean, she already kind of knows me, but it's more like catching up on like what has happened in your life since high school. And <laughs> so here's the funny thing. In September, when I wanted to like go to a therapist again, um, I was like not in a good place mentally at all whatsoever, really bad, had mental breakdowns, was super anxious, not good. But now, I am in like such a great place right now, I'm like, I don't even need a therapist, but here I am. And I don't want to not go to <laughs> this therapist just because I'm doing good right now, because This is give me brow from benefit because chances are as soon as I'm like oh you know I don't need a therapist right now then I'm suddenly gonna become mentally unstable again because <laughs> you know that's how things happen They're funny like that so right now like the biggest thing that I'm just doing with this therapist is getting coping skills for my anxiety because if you have like a past trauma like just for example say your past trauma is with the dentist just as an example you could like work to like get over that and then you would be like not like cured of your anxiety but something like that but <laughs> with me it's just I constantly have anxiety over anything and everything and you're not gonna get over it it's just kind of learning how to deal with it so right now we're just basically gonna do coping skills because I don't have good coping skills. My coping skill, my one coping skill is to sleep and that's not particularly good. <laughs> but she actually thought of why I might be sleeping as my coping skill. Is this not so beautiful? So as you guys know, I have kidney stones. It's great. And oh, I have to prime my eyes, hello. So I have kidney stones. This is not my eye primer. I'm gonna use my e.l.f. eye primer. And since I have this rare kidney disease, that's why I get my stones. A lot of the methods to prevent stones and stone formation in normal people doesn't work for me. So it's basically trial and error with a bunch of different things to see if we can find some way to help my stone situation. So, one of the things that I know for a fact definitely does help me is sleeping because if I sleep, a lot of times I'll wake up and my stone will have passed. And I think that's because my whole body is like relaxed so it can like pass easier. Like, I don't know, science. <laughs> But I think, she said, maybe my brain is connecting that, and it's like, well, sleep. So, you know, I don't know. Who knows? So, I'm going to take Optimist shade right here and put that in my crease and outer corner. <laughs> I don't know why it's funny. <laughs> so, anyways... But I've been doing great for some unknown reason. And 
I've been getting some really strange, disturbing dreams. Um, like, not good. Like, kind of, I guess you could kind of call them nightmares, but I don't get nightmares. I just, like, don't. I kind of want to just to experience it, like, you know, for the heck of it. I know that sounds weird, but I've never really had a nightmare. But they're, they're not good dreams. They're bad dreams, but I wouldn't call them a nightmare. I don't wake up and I'm like, <gasps> I'm like scared or whatever. I don't know, but they're not good dreams. And I'm worried that that means my mental health is going to start going downhill because I really have no like indicators of when my mental health is just going to plummet. It just does it whenever it feels like it. It's like the hard thing about my anxiety. It's like some days I'll just be doing great for no reason at all. And other days I'll be doing terrible for no reason at all. And I don't know why. So it's hard to like predict, you know, like, I don't know. So I'm worried that my disturbing dreams are like red flag warning sign. Your mental health is about to take a dip. But I don't know. Who knows? But I'm like being cautious. <laughs> So, anyways, but I've been doing great. So, <laughs> this is a thing I've talked about before. I'm going to use Palo Santo. It's like this shimmery shade. I used to have hobbies. <laughs> and I developed these hobbies when I was anxious in high school. My two main hobbies are music and writing fan fiction about Riker Lynch. Because Riker Lynch is my true love. So <laughs> I hadn't been like into music and fan fiction for like kind of the past couple of years. And I was like, maybe I'm just not anxious enough to have hobbies anymore. <laughs> Maybe I need to be anxious to have hobbies. Like, I don't know. And then, kind of around January, like right in the new year, I just started writing a ton of fan fiction. Like, a ton. Hours and hours and hours. Thousands of words. Like, so I'm enjoying it so much and I don't know why all of a sudden I'm just so inspired to write fan fiction. And it doesn't make sense because usually I would only do my hobbies if I was anxious as a way to like avoid whatever was going on. But I'm not really that anxious right now. But I'm writing tons of fan fiction and it's strange and I don't know what's going on. But I'm just writing as much as I can while I have the inspiration for it. <laughs> so, I don't know what that's all about. And then music. I know that that's another one. I haven't really been playing that much music. But, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about music right now. Just because I haven't done it in a while. I just don't know how to feel about it. But I have this new inspiration to learn how to play stuff on the piano. I have my keyboard right there. I know how to play the piano. I took piano lessons since I was five years old until eighth grade. I'm gonna take, whoa, put that in my inner corner. So I know how to play the piano, but I wanna play like, I don't know how to explain what I wanna play. I wanna, oh geez, the sun is like glaring in my mirror and I can't see it. I want to be able to play, um, like, kind of, like, okay, I don't know how to explain this. You know how when you play, like, the guitar, you can sing along to it because you're singing the melody and the guitar is just playing the chords? That's what I want to do, but on the piano. I don't want to be playing, um, like, melody on the piano. I want to be playing something to accompany my voice so I can sing the melody on the piano. So that's basically what I want. So, 
I don't know how to do that. I didn't learn that in piano lessons. I just learned how to play stuff off of a page. So I know a lot of like playing stuff to sing with is a lot of just like knowing what chords to play and like putting it all together and making it sound good and I don't know how to do that. But I feel like I can figure that out just because I am musically talented. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but that's one of my newest things that I'm about to do. So I'm going to take this Ulta Brow Highlight Stick. Let me just put that on my brow bone as a brow bone highlight. Ta-da. And then just like kind of blend it with my finger. And this was all inspired <laughs> by a new celebrity crush, of course. I don't have a lot of celebrity crushes, but when I do, they're usually all connected. So, <laughs> you can almost kind of predict who my next celebrity crush might be. I gotta find a good eyeliner. So basically what I mean by that is, I like Riker Lynch. He's like, my person. <laughs> I'm taking the Urban Decay 24-7 eyeliner. It's just black. I'm gonna line my eyes. Hello. I can't talk while I'm doing this. <laughs> Riker was on a show called Glee. Way back when. Glee was a thing. <laughs> and Riker was a warbler, which that's like, okay, there was a main school called McKinley, and that was where most of like the main characters were, but then they introduced this other school called Dalton Academy, and that was kind of to be like McKinley's rival school, and kind of like the leader of the Warblers, which were another glee club. His name was Blaine Anderson, and he was like their leader, so we kind of got to know his character, because he was like the leader, so whatever. So... <laughs> My point is, this is how this guy is connected. Well, actually, I'm kind of into two guys in addition to Riker. So, Riker was a warbler, and these two other guys were warblers too. So, I'm using my Rocket Mascara from Maybelline. I need to, like, do this with a mirror. <laughs> So, the two guys that I am now low-key in love with <laughs> are Darren Chris and Grant Gustin. And Darren Chris is so musically talented. And one of the songs that he is, like, most famous for, I guess, is Teenage Dream. Because Teenage Dream by Katy Perry is the song that he and the Warblers covered in Glee as like their first song to like introduce you to the Warblers. So whenever he like plays a concert or whatever, he'll play Teenage Dream because the Glee fans still like remember that and love that and it's like a very special song to him and his fans because he like literally got to live his teenage dream because he was on Glee, and it's cute, and I love it. So, he plays Teenage Dream on the piano a lot, and it just kills me, because, <laughs> like, oh, I'm just so attracted to guys who are, like, so passionate, especially about music, and, like, he puts, like, all of himself into playing Teenage Dream and I just like die inside as a fangirl. So he has now inspired me to try to learn how to play Teenage Dream on the piano. But like I said, it would be like the accompanying part to my voice, which I don't know how to do. So that's where that came from, that idea. I've done like kind of the idea before with some R5 songs, and I think a Grace Vanderwall song? That's on like my music Instagram. I did like short little things like that. They're not great, but it's like the basic idea of just playing like the chords and singing to it. 
so I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing yet. I'm gonna have to watch YouTube videos and stuff. I low-key want to go back and take piano lessons and tell them this is like what I want to learn. I don't want to read stuff. I just want to know how to throw stuff together and sing with it. <laughs> but I'm very happy with my ukulele lessons and my ukulele teacher right now that I don't want to do that. I just want to try to finagle something out of my head, come up with something, so I don't know. But, so now I'm kind of getting back into music. The second guy I'm low-key in love with is Grant Gustin, who plays The Flash. Well, I guess he doesn't play The Flash. He plays Barry Allen on The Flash. Never seen it, but I want to see it now because I'm low-key in love with him. He played Sebastian Smythe on Glee, and he was kind of like the villain warbler, caused a lot of trouble. So, so normally, <laughs> I write fan fiction just about Riker. Oh my gosh, is this one random eye right here? What the heck? Get out. <laughs> normally, I just write about Riker, but I have expanded my fan fiction to include Riker's character from Glee. And now I have expanded Riker's character on Glee to include Riker's character on Glee. Kurt Mega's character on Glee. He's another celebrity I like. Um, Darren Chris's character on Glee and Grant Gustin's character on Glee. So they're all in a fan fiction together right now. And I'm just like, oh, can't. I'm just like living my best fangirl life over here, basically. That's what I'm doing. There's some random truck driving down my road. The sun is starting to come in obnoxiously. I feel like this mascara is dying. It's not good. But actually, I guess it is kind of good because it's in my project pan. So the goal is to use it up. But uh, do you guys know how long I've spent trying to put mascara on? Like a long time. Ugh, it's just not going on good. <laughs> Let's talk about college for a second. Still hate it. I'm never gonna like it. Always gonna be against it. And, but, if I had to be in college, um, definitely the college I go to, Liberty University, definitely the best. It's like the lesser of all the evils <laughs> so it's not that bad but this semester I've just had so many essays group projects assignments I'm just like brain dead all right let's do a lip color I picked out some options. So, I have two different color lip, hello. Two different color lip liners. One's more pinky, the other one's more brown. And then I have, oh my goodness. Then I have two lipsticks. One's more brown. I think this is the one that flew out of its tube. Yep, it is. Flew out of its tube, it's all good. Then I have this one that's more pinky from Illamasqua can't see it because it's in the sun. And then I have a lip gloss from Pink. So I think we're gonna go with the more brown tones because this is kind of like orangey. Closer to brown than pink. So my lip liner is from Italia in 1056 Nude. So here we go. <laughs> For all you guys wondering, Angel's doing great. No more UTIs. <laughs> we give her um, UTI medicine um, every month for like five days, just as a precautionary to prevent 
anything from forming. I guess that's a thing that vets recommend if you have an older cat who is more prone to getting them. Like, Siamese are very prone to getting UTIs for some reason. So Angel's great. She's sleeping. She's snoring. And then I'm going to put this gloss over top of it. I'm doing great. I'm over my kidney infection. It's the worst thing ever. And I do still have kidney stones. <laughs> Last night it was so bad. I had such bad spasms. So bad. Ta-da! So... This has been my get ready with me, story time, life update, whatever the heck you want to call it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know I haven't posted a video in a while, but I've been very busy with school, as you can tell, because I have just endless essays. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, ooh look, I can like light up my nose. Leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Comment down below any of your thoughts. Hit the subscribe button. Turn on my post notifications. I'll try to show you like a closer up of my makeup. Just nice and peachy. Warmer toned lips. That's what we're looking like. Here's Angel. She's tired. So... I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.